The climate crisis is here. Time slipping away to stop the worst effects of global warming, and we need solutions. Hosted by me, Molly Wood, How We Survive dives deep into the economics, the tech, and the human stories behind those solutions. From billionaires trying to monopolize lithium mines to business rivalries so fierce that one CEO was dragged off a plane by federal authorities. How We Survive, following the money to the end of the world because our survival might depend on it. Listen on Odyssey and everywhere you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Ellen Pompeo, and I would like to introduce you to my new podcast, Tell Me. I'm going to invite people that I find interesting to come on and tell me their stories. That's where Tell Me comes from. Listen and follow Tell Me, a podcast presentation of Cadence 13 with me, Ellen Pompeo. Now for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. Joe to Cameron, John Ritchie. It is 94 WIP, the day after just a debacle by the Eagles, a disgrace, frankly. And the Twitter poll question of the day is brought to us by the Casino at Delaware Park. Beers and Gears, the Craft Beer and Car Show, is back Sunday, October 24th at Delaware Park. Details online at DelawarePark.com. Today's question, do you think Nick Sirianni will be the Eagles head coach next season? A, yes. B, no. You can vote at Sports Radio WIP on Twitter. Um, there's been a lot going on. Let me just say this. We were going to have Alex Singleton on the show. That obviously got altered by the Howie Roseman press conference, which occurred because of the uh, – trade of Zach Ertz so um, we we're not having Alex on today he knows that uh, we we may have him on next week so we're trying to arrange that he's all good with that bad of the bone award we <laughs> will get to that later um, we also had no beat to hammer for obvious reasons there was 15 different press conferences that occurred and we're all fired up about the Eagles as it is let's go to the phones Sirianni his press conference is going to happen any moment as soon as it does you will hear his uh, presser and the reality is he's got a lot to answer for. As I said earlier, I can honestly tell you I think Sirianni is the worst coach the Eagles have had in my lifetime. And that's not counting Marion Campbell because I was too young to know. I was only about six or seven years old when the Swamp Fox was the head coach. But I've seen all the rest, and I've been old enough to know enough about football since. And this guy is worse than Chip Kelly. He is worse than Rich Kotite. And that means that Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie – in the last eight months, hired a coach who was worse than Rich Kotite and worse than Chip Kelly. It is a disgrace what has happened with the Eagles. They have rotted out at their core. They need a new head coach. They need a new, they need a starting quarterback. They need a new general manager. They need a new defensive coordinator. And the owner has failed us miserably over the last couple of years. Let's go to Will in Northeast Philadelphia. Will, you're on WIP. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Doing, doing well, bro. We're frustrated, Will. Yeah. We're sad. Yeah, We're frustrated. And sad. I'm, and sad. Yeah, yeah. I, I just heard it, too, man. Um, not just that, not all, just that, Will. We wait eight months for an Eagles season to come around. It comes right. around, and this is what we get? Come on. Right. And, and you know what? I was I was ready to say that. I thought the breaking news was going to be like, Howie Roseman just got fired. I, I actually, when, I'll tell you what. When, when James played the breaking news sounder, and I didn't know what the news was going to be, I... My first thought was either Howie or Sirianni. Right. Now it should have been it should have been Ertz, but just candidly, my first thought was Howie or Sirianni. Right. Real quick couple points. Like like even even like when you don't have no game plan, you got the same formation week in, week out. You know, it a team don't have to prepare for us. They already know, just like everybody been saying, you know, they already know the same formation, the same dump off play. Like it's nothing different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and the whole thing with, with Sirianni is, man, like he is a joke. Yeah, you he, know, he and, and he don't take anything serious. And you gotta understand that the fans pay a lot of hard earned money to, you know, support their team, man. And I don't think that, you know, as far as the ownership, the general manager, like, they don't care. Like, I want to really ask uh, uh, Jeff Lurie, is this really about money, man? Because you've got enough money in the world. So, please. No, it's not It's not about, me. Will, it's not about money. You know what it is? It's, it's, I'll give you one word. It's mismanagement. It's mismanagement. Uh, They've been mismanaged. And by the way, and Will, great call. I'm going to say one alteration to Will. I'll be a literalist here. Will said, you know, they don't have a game plan. John, the sick part is they actually do have a game plan on offense. This is their game plan. Like, yeah. I would feel better as an Eagles fan. <laughs> James, I would feel better 
if we knew there was no game plan and they looked like that on offense. They were just like rolling the ball yeah. in the, the field and said, go out and right. play. Yeah. Like th- that was actually a plan last night. They thought it gave them the best chance to win. Yeah. Like that. That's after they did their whole "let's get together and spend the weekend at Nick's house and game right. plan for this game." That's right. what we got. Right after a training, after an off season where you had about six months before training camp, then you had a training camp, you had a couple of preseason games, you had before last night five regular season games, and that last night was your approach, Nick Sirianni, on how to play offense in pro football. Are you kidding me? Let's go to Joe in New Jersey. Joe, you're on WIP. Guys, very quick, I know there's a call-up. What a flawed concept, the idiot who said that you don't need linebackers in the NFL. We were getting, we were getting pushed all over the field. Yeah, linebackers yeah, we were. were dragging. And you know something? If you're a lifeguard, you, need, you, know, you have to know how to swim. If you're a football player, you have to know how to tackle. Yeah. We don't know how to tackle. We know the rest of the NFL. Yeah. You know something? Don't go get a cornerback, guys. Go get me a 250-pound sideline to sideline linebacker that can tackle. Thank that you, Joe. That can play now. He's 55 years old. He's better than what we have. Hey, it's, it's it's great insanity. point. Great point. You know, Joe, yesterday I spent a good portion of time talking about how Davion Taylor was going to be a, a boost for our defense. Davion Taylor last night got destroyed left and right. And the problem is he's better than our other options. That's awful. Davion Taylor, who doesn't really seem to know what he's looking at or how to diagnose plays, but he can run. The problem is he's 230 pounds, and when he's not getting there with a full head of steam, guys just pick him up and deposit him five yards downfield. We're tiny, we're weak, and we're not tough enough at linebacker. John, you want to know something? I'll take a bet. Anybody on the whip. If that guy weighs 230, I'm going under. I'm going under. <laughs> but he looks like he weighs 200 pounds. He doesn't yeah. weigh 230. Yeah, well. I mean, John, it's frustrating. You know, I'm watching this game. I'm thinking about Trotter. I'm thinking about Joyner. I'm yeah. thinking about the great linebacker. Yeah, both guys I had to scrimmage. block. Both guys I had to yeah. try to block. I'll, let's put it that way. And they were beasts. You, they, they struck fear into your heart. These linebackers, guys, are licking their chops. Joe, what, a, up against what a great call, Joe. We appreciate it, man. I mentioned tried to Amy last night, John. I, there was a moment, I think it was Singleton, one of the guys got trucked. I said, if Trot's right there, that running back's going backwards. He's, just, he's getting stopped. And Fournette, it, look, Fournette's multiple a Multiple times. Yeah. It happened multiple times. It, it was the, the, it, it, the exception, not the rule, the other way around. Like, the exception was when they would actually stop a guy's momentum. I totally agree. Now, we are still waiting on Nick Sirianni's press conference. It is going to be, we're told, any moment, as soon as the head coach is ready to go, and we'll see what babble nonsense spin he's going to have this week. <laughs> John, if we have to hear one more time <laughs> that they don't run the ball because of screens to wide receivers and RPOs that end up being passes. Ooh. I mean, it's it's pathetic. And then when he's doing his whole walking around on the field before the game in a Julius Irving jersey, dude, stop. 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 You, you look like a clown. Like, cool. You want to ingratiate yourself? Cool. Fine. Don't force it so much. Don't be that guy. You're that guy. And that's that's really not, not wise. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy, especially – when you're losing, and they're losing in part because of you. Let's go to Ray in Morristown. Ray, you're on WIP. Listen, hey Joe, you, you got to give me a little dispensation today because this, this – I, oh, God. This, this, is, this, is, this is rough. I mean, listening to Zach, I mean, I have so much respect in the world for Zach Ertz. I think he's a tremendous man and he a is. football player. Really I, I'm really going to miss him, and I said that to you guys last year. Uh, during the off season, when all this foolishness was going on behind the scenes, but I just want to know when, when are they going to stop lying to us? All this crazy notion yeah. that, that Dallas Goddard was sick and he wasn't. Play- Listen, guys. I'm well, no, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Got to test a positive. For COVID, okay, right? yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get all that. I understand he's positive. But what, what I want to say to the fan base is this, folks: they have been planning this move all year, and I want to ask you a question. I want to know. And, and some of the beat writers out there, they got to step their game up because only less had really any decent questions. It's the softball questions that they were asking. You got to ask the hard questions. This situation yeah. has been brewing uh, for, for 
uh, several months now during the off season. They've known all off season that they were going to make this move. That's why they've been showcasing Zach Ertz this year. We've been asking, oh, why is Dallas Goddard not playing? We know he's not playing because they were showcasing him because they knew they were going to get rid of him. They've known all week. Except, Ray, Zach Ray, Ray I, 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 I almost entirely agree with you except for one thing. If the Eagles were 4-2, and two, I don't know that Zach Ertz would have been traded. I think they went into the season knowing that if they felt the season was going the wrong way, they would trade him, and which is well, which is a a reasonable approach. I mean, teams do that in sports all the time. Let me just ask you this: this now this is going in a different direction. Okay. Now that we've seen the approach that the Eagles have taken with Zach Ertz, do you think the Seventy Sixers take a similar approach with Ben Simmons? Bring him in, yes. make him a yes. showcase, yeah. make everybody think, oh, everything's just peachy keen and fine. And then once we get about five or six weeks into the season, bam. Well, well, it's a and Ray, good call. It, listen, I, I think two things on the Simmons thing as it relates to Ertz. Um, yeah, I think that's where it's headed. I mean, John and James don't think Ben will play, and they might be proven right. I think they're wrong. I think Ben will play. Um, we'll see. Uh, the other thing that really struck me hearing Zach Ertz talk about the fans and the booing is how much he gets it. Yes. He gets it. It was an amazing answer. It was a remarkable answer. And if Ben Simmons could just – get it the way Zach Ertz gets it, Ben Simmons would understand that that Sixers fans, Philadelphia sports fans, that when we get on him and his, and his team, it's because we love the team. We initially loved him for a long while, and we want him to be better because we want the team to be better, and we want the Sixers to win a championship. And Ben just doesn't understand that whole dynamic. So, you know, one thing Zach Ertz really gets, he didn't say it, but I, I know I, I can just tell, he knows that we, Philadelphia sports fans, have been Eagles fans longer than he and his teammates have been Eagles players. And so he respects the fact that whether it goes back to the early 2000s or the 90s or the 80s or the 70s or the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, people are alive who have been Eagles fans for, you know, 20 to 90 years. And he respects that. And I, I thought his answer near the end of that press conference about fans was phenomenal. Ben could learn a lesson. Of course, he won't because he's Ben, but he could. Russ and Freehold while we wait for Nick Sirianni's press conference. Hey, Russ. How's it going, guys? I know we're going to get cut here in a second, but listen, it's obvious that before you can evaluate anyone on the Eagles offense, Nick Sirianni has to go because I don't know what quarterback in the NFL would be successful running this offense. Right. And what is this offense? Let's say Jalen Hurts got hurt, which I'm surprised only been sacked nine times so far this year with that offensive line and the play calling. Let's say he got hurt. Who's coming in and running this offense? Flacco, well, it's going to have to Minshew. change. It's going to have to change completely. But, you know, on the positive side, maybe it'll actually go to a real NFL-style yeah. approach yeah. With, well, I, well, with Flacco Jalen in Hurts there. A shot. That's exactly my point, John. Can we see Jalen Hurts run that? I, mean, I wish. I heard the post. The post game, Nick Sirianni said two things. He said, which was alarming. He said, "We look at those screen passes like run plays." Which last time we heard that was was Chip Kelly. This is Chip, Chip Kelly's dream roster right here because he could actually <laughs> score points with this offense. They're fast, so that's ironic. And the other thing he said was something about RPOs, where he's like, "Yeah, yeah we run those as break plays to give Jalen a break." So you got everything. Your whole offense right now is predicated on a guy who's played ten games. Yeah. And meanwhile, you got probably one of the top five running backs. You don't scheme anything for this guy. And if that player gets hurt, your offense completely disappears. Listen, Russ, very, very astute points by you, man. Very astute. The bottom line is they don't – well, there's a lot of bottom lines. One is they don't trust Hurts to be a full field read guy, and so they have this Mickey Mouse high school offense, and then defenses after the Atlanta game figured it Reading out. one man. Yeah, I mean, frankly, Atlanta's defensive coordinator should be ashamed that he actually let the Eagles get away with it and win a yeah. game against them. All right, Sirianni, we're still waiting for him. That's next. Whenever he's ready, we're ready. Joe to Cameron, John Ritchie, Sirianni, plus calls up ahead on 94 WIP. Hey, let me tell you about five-hour energy. When to use it? Well, when you're, when you're tired. Not sick and tired like we are here today of our football team, but when you're actually physically tired, uh, like right around now or in the next hour or two after lunch. I get tired after lunch, you know, a decent amount. Not every day, but a decent amount. Research actually shows – that more than 70% of us hit the wall after lunch. Well, you can let a five-hour energy shot help leap you over that wall instead of crashing into it. Also great before a workout. You know, one of those days you're kind of eh, a little lagging. You, you got to work out, want to work out, not feeling it. Five-hour energy shot, bang, ready to go. Try the five-hour energy 
extra strength cherry flavor that tastes is unbelievable with zero sugar. It's convenient, portable size, the perfect pick me up for getting stuff done. And of course, you can go to Five Hour Energy's website to find over 15 flavors you can choose from. You can also visit fivehourenergy.com. You even have the option to build your own 12 pack or 24 pack. And if you're out and about, Pick up a five-hour energy shot at your local grocery and convenience store. Five-hour energy, it's helped me, it can help you. It's everywhere. Five-hour energy. Man, there are a lot of podcasts out there. Definitely. I mean, there's 3 million shows, 50 million episodes, and more every day. I mean, who has the time to figure out which ones are the best podcasts? We do. That's who. What's up, guys? I am Alicia Renee. And I'm Dax Holt. And we are your hosts of Pod Sauce, a podcast discovery show. Look at us as your podcast concierge. <laughs> we do all the work for you. We listen to the shows, review them, pick the best episodes, and interview the hosts. Pod Sauce. Let us help you find your next binge. Tell them where to go, Dax. Go to podsauce.com. My job, moving New Jersey forward and making New Jersey work for all of us. That's our governor, Bill Murphy. He's making New Jersey stronger and fairer. That means a stronger economy, the best public schools, a cleaner environment, working to make health care, child care, and college more affordable, and protecting our right to vote and our right to choose. That's my job. We're not going back. Paid for by Murphy for Governor 2021, Newark, New Jersey. Care One, a leading health care provider for more than 20 years, offers seven-day-a-week short- and long-term rehabilitations, specialized memory care, and superior clinical programs. Care One also offers the highest standards in assisted living services with nurses available around the clock. With more than 30 Care One health care communities throughout New Jersey, there's a location near you ready to help you and your loved ones. Visit them online at care-one.com to learn more. That's care-one.com. Care One. Trust in our care.